Have you felt a strong presence from the woods? A feeling like you're being watched? Well, the truth is, something is watching you from the trees and shadows. Monsters hide in the woods, preying on the innocent and striking quickly. They won't stop. They never will. This is my story and I hope it serves as a warning to all about the truth of the woods and how dangerous it truly is. How dangerous they are. Growing up, I never had a dad. My father left me and my mom when I was young, and I haven't seen him since. Sure, I get the occasional birthday or Christmas card with money, but besides that, he's almost a stranger to me. After my father left, my mother decided to leave the city life behind, and we moved when I was 10 to Wisconsin, where we bought a small cabin out in the woods. At first, I hated living there. The woods always had terrified me as a kid. Every time I looked out the window towards the woods, I was got an unsettling feeling. Chills would run up my spine, and I would start to shake uncontrollably. I always felt something was watching me. The feeling never went away as I got older. I hated the walk to school that I had to make every day. The looming feeling of getting watched grew even stronger as I walked in the woods. I felt so vulnerable looking at the tall trees. The woods that I lived by had almost an endless stretch of tall trees in the forest. I felt something was watching me up on the trees. My mom though felt completely different about the woods. She loved it. She loved taking walks outside and just staring at the trees in the forest taking all of nature in. She was an artist, so she loved to just sit outside and paint the trees. Many of the portraits in our cabin were of the trees and the forest. I asked her if she ever felt a presence when she was out there, like something watching her. Yeah, I feel a strong presence, but it's a comforting one, she said. I feel safe and protected. I never understood why she had such a comforting feeling from the woods while I felt a terrifying one. One that kept me wide awake almost every night. On one night when I was about to go to sleep, I saw something in the trees. It was far off into the distance, but I could barely make out the silhouette of a figure. It was big and bulky with long arms and from the angle it looked like it was staring right at me. I froze as I stared at it. And then I heard my mom walk into my room and when I turned to see her open the door, I looked back and the figure was gone. I tried telling my mom but she never listened. She said I was simply imagining things and that I needed to quit being scared of the woods. The woods protect us from the outside world, Michael. They are a shield to all the bad things in the world. I knew what I saw, and I knew whatever it was, it wasn't protecting me. On the way to school that morning, I felt the presence stronger than ever. Every time I turned around, though, nothing was there. Suddenly, I heard a branch snap behind me and I didn't dare turn around. I couldn't move. And then I heard another branch snap and I took off running. I could hear fast steps behind me as I was running which made me run faster. I could hear the footsteps gaining on me. When it seemed that they were right on me, I burst out into the woods, sweating like a pig. The day went by normal. Once school was over, I asked my friend James if he wanted to walk home with me. James was my best friend and the only person who understood my fear of the woods. He lived close by to me, and he also could feel a disturbing presence watching him. He tried telling his parents like I did with mine, but they didn't listen either. Dude, did that really happen? He asked as I told him about what had happened on the walk to school. Yeah, man. I just don't feel comfortable walking in the woods alone. I know there's something there, I said. 
What do you think it is? James asked as we started walking home. I don't know. I think I saw it last night though. It was like really big with huge long arms. It was far away so I couldn't see anything else. He was quiet now. And then he said, I think I've seen it too. I saw something last night too. It was a lot like the thing you describe. And then we heard a loud snap behind us and turned around to see a tree branch on the ground snapped in half. Dude, something's following us. We need to run, James said. No, don't run. I did that and it chased me. Maybe if we keep walking slowly, it won't do anything. James, looking terrified at me, nodded his head slowly as we started walking. We heard more snaps as we walked, getting louder and closer as we walked. I looked over at James. He looked back at me, white as a ghost. After what felt like an hour, I could see the outline of my house in the distance. Our pace quickened as we got closer and closer to my house, the snaps and cracks quickening as well behind us. As soon as we got close enough, we took off in a dead sprint towards my house, not looking back. We ran inside and locked the door once we had made it. Is everything okay? I heard my mom say behind me. We looked at each other and then I heard James say, Yeah, Mrs. S, we just raced each other to the house. She looked at me and I nodded quickly. Okay, be careful though with the door. It's old and I don't want it falling off the hinges. Okay, sorry mom. I said as James started to run off upstairs. Once upstairs and in my room, James said, Dude, we can't walk that way to school anymore. I know, but what are we going to tell our parents? They won't believe us, I said. James was silent now. I knew that he wouldn't be able to come up with anything. I think as long as we're quiet and walk slowly, that thing won't come after us, I said. Yeah, uh, let's hope so, James said in a quivering voice. James went home shortly after that and after I ate dinner, I headed back upstairs to bed. What is that thing, I think, as I laid in bed? A person, an animal. It's quick like an animal, but it looks like a tall person. I looked out the window into the dark forest and I froze. The thing was there, and closer. I could make out more characteristics as I stared at it. It had a hunchback and long fingers with razor sharp claws. I didn't see any eyes on it, but I could somehow feel its cold stare locked on me. It just stared, observing me. And then it turned around and walked back into the forest. That's no person or animal, I think to myself, once it's gone. It wants me. I'm its prey. After a restless night of sleep, I woke up and walked downstairs to see my mom sitting on the counter with a worried look on her face. Hey mom, is everything okay? I asked. Good morning, honey. I have some bad news. She said, looking at me. What is it? I asked. Your friend James, well, he's missing. His parents went into his room this morning and he was gone. I stood there petrified. It wasn't following us. It was tracking us. Tracking James. Are you okay, Michael? She asked. I could only see James' face in my mind now. The image of him looking at me as we were walking home, white as a ghost. I couldn't keep it in anymore, and I told my mom everything. The thing that had chased me, James and I being stalked by it, and seeing it for the past two nights and getting closer to me. You've got to believe me, mom, I pleaded. Something is in those woods and it took James and now I think it's going to take me. She looked at me with a sad expression. She sighed and then said, I know this must be hard for you, Michael, but there is nothing in those woods. James might have ran away or anything could have happened. 
Mom, it took him. James would never run away from his parents, I said. She looked at me and then looked at the clock behind me. I think it's time you get to school now, dear. We'll talk about this later. I pleaded with my mom to drive me to school. I begged her on my knees. And she finally relented after a minute. Okay, okay, just this one time. We need to leave now though and be quick. I have to get to the studio. I thanked her and I ran to get my backpack and stuff. Nothing happened on the drive, as I expected. After dropping me off at the front of school, everyone ran up to me and asked if I heard about what had happened to James. Everyone was talking about James that day. They started rumors either saying that he ran away or he was kidnapped. Do you know what happened to him? Sally asked frantically as she ran up to me at lunch. She had had a crush on James since the second grade. And even though James showed no signs of affection towards her, she still adored him. She was a short girl with short brown hair and brown eyes. I debated about whether I should tell Sally the truth, but I knew that she wouldn't believe me. No one would. I told her that I didn't know and tried to continue eating my lunch, but she wouldn't give up. Come on, Michael, you're his best friend. Please, if you know anything that could have happened to him, just tell me. She said with tears in her eyes. I tried ignoring her, but she wouldn't stop. And then her friends came over and started asking. And then more and more people came over asking if I knew what had happened to James. The voices became too much for me, and I screamed. I don't know what happened to him. Just leave me alone. I did it as loud as I could. Everybody stopped talking and just stared at me. My cheeks had turned red as I was embarrassed. The bell rang and everyone started heading off to class, leaving me still sitting at the lunch table. I packed my unfinished lunch and started heading off to my science class which I had next. I decided then and there that I would find James. I had to know if he was alive or not. James, if you're still alive, I'm gonna find you. After school, I called my mom and asked if she could pick me up. She said that she could and five minutes later, she pulled up in her white Cadillac. As we drove home, she asked, Are you feeling better, honey? I lied saying, Yeah, much better. I knew that she would never believe me. I was going to have to face that thing on my own. We got home and I headed straight upstairs where I dumped all of my school supplies on my bed and started to pack gear for that night. I packed a spare flashlight battery, some water, and I put the pepper spray my mom gave to me last year in my pocket just in case. As I was eating dinner, I came up with a plan. I would sneak out of the house when my mom went to bed, which was usually around 10 o'clock, and I would head into the woods and try to find and look for James. I knew my chances against that thing were slim to none, so I knew that I would have to be quiet and careful. After dinner, I went to my room and I waited. I waited for hours until I looked over at my clock which read 10.30pm. I hopped out of bed and walked over to the window, opening it quietly. I made a little rope with my bed sheets as I waited, as I knew that I wouldn't be able to jump off the window without getting hurt. I tied the rope against my bed and started to climb out of the house slowly. Once down on the ground, I turned my flashlight on and aimed it towards the woods. It was even more terrifying now. The trees seemed endless and I couldn't even see the moon. I took a deep breath and I started to walk slowly into the woods. I noticed something that started to scare me quickly once I was walking. There was absolute silence, not a peep, no crickets and no owls and nothing. I flashed my light around quickly, calling out James' name quietly. James, James, are you out there? Nothing but silence echoes the woods. I walked towards the directions of James' house, thinking that he may be around there. As I'm about halfway there, the battery for my flashlight dies. Darkness now engulfs me as I panic. I scramble for the batteries in my backpack. Once I find them, 
I take the dead batteries out to my flashlight and I put the new ones in. When I turned my light back on, I screamed. Standing in front of me was that thing. The fear that I felt was indescribable. Even to this day, the image of it still fills my dreams with nightmares. It had no skin. It was all red muscles and tissues. It had no eyes and its mouth was full of dozens of razor sharp teeth and it smiled and drooled looking down at me. It was at least nine feet tall and it had a bad hunch to its back. Its claws were even sharper close up, as sharp as its teeth were. Its upper body was big and bulky while its long legs were skinny as a twig. Its arms were huge with big muscles and bulging veins. I screamed even more as it bent down and picked me up by the head. It dragged me across the woods as I kicked and screamed. Stupid, stupid. What the hell were you thinking coming into the woods, I thought. It dragged me until I eventually passed out. When I woke, I found myself in a dark cave hanging upside down by at least five feet. The cave looked ancient, with three tunnels that led into darkness. I had never seen this cave in the woods, never even knew there was one in the first place. The light that was in the cave was from a single fire in the middle of it. I could see my backpack on the ground with my phone near it. I tried to reach and grab it, but I couldn't move. The thing had wrapped ropes around my ankles to the sharp rocks above me. I was hopeless. I thought to James now as I started to look around the cave. In one of the corners of the caves, I saw a single orange t-shirt on the ground. That was a James shirt, I realized. Suddenly, I heard heavy footsteps walking towards me. I saw the thing walk into the cave as it stared at me. I panicked and started screaming again. And then the thing spoke in a dark and gruff voice. Quiet food. Maybe I'll let you live a little longer. I shut up now, petrified as it spoke to me. I saw in its hand a leg. God, please don't let that be James, I thought. It spoke again. I've been watching you for a long time. You've always looked the most appetizing of everyone. It lifted up the leg in its hand and then said, Your friend here tasted wonderful, but I think you'll taste even better. It said with a twisted grin on its face. I started to cry, weeping at the loss of my friend and knowing that I would follow in his footsteps. Somehow, I got out a question in a shaky voice. What are you? The thing looked down at me for a moment, thinking, and then it said, I am an ancient being. My kind is almost extinct as there are only a few of us left. We have ruled the woods for the past centuries, preying on anything that steps foot on any of our lands. Over time, hunters have come and killed most of my kind. Now, we hide in the shadows, only coming out when food is near. I thought for a moment before asking another question. Do you only eat young kids? The thing now smiled. Showing off its dozen of teeth as it said, Of course, kids taste the best, juicy and sweet. It had cut me off the ropes with its claws, squeezing me with its ginormous hands as it started to open its mouth. I was barely able to ask one more question. How can you hunt without any eyes? It stared at me, closing its mouth before saying, I can track your scent. My nose serves as my eyes because I have none. I smell my food out before I come for it at night. Lucky for me, I didn't have to come to you. You came to me. It opened its mouth wide as I panicked, starting to throw myself around, trying to get out of its grasp. Hold still, food. It boomed at me. I was somehow able to move my hands into my pocket where miraculously I felt the pepper spray that didn't fall out of my pocket. 
I acted quickly as I got closer to the thing's mouth. I pulled out the pepper spray and I sprayed it into its face. It shrieked as it dropped me, crying and holding its face. I got up quickly and ran towards the middle entrance where the creature came from. I ran as quickly as I could, hearing the creature give chase behind me. I ran until I somehow found the entrance to the cave. I saw light illuminating from the entrance as I ran with all my might into the day. I kept running even after I was out of the cave. I ran and I never looked back. I was able to somehow navigate my way through the forest to the cabin. I gave a sigh of relief once I saw the cabin and I stopped running. I looked behind me now, expecting the thing to be right behind me, ready to strike. But nothing was there. I walked back to the cabin out of breath. When I opened the door, my mom ran towards me, embracing me as she cried. Where have you been? I called the police and they couldn't find you. I thought that I had lost you. I didn't say anything. I was tired and hungry, but worst of all, I was terrified knowing that more of those things were out there, waiting for me. We moved shortly after that to Chicago and moved in with my aunt. I grew up normally and made new friends in Chicago, and even got a new best friend named Kyle. I never forgot about James, though. He was my first best friend who had my back and died in the hands of a monster. The thought of that thing still haunts me now. I tried telling my mom what happened many times, but I couldn't. I knew that she still wouldn't believe me. What scares me the most is knowing that there are still more of those things out there, hunting in the shadows. I write this story to tell everyone, to warn everyone about these things. They hunt for children, feasting on them. Be careful near the woods. You never know what lurks in the shadows of the trees. Please, don't ever go into the woods at night. They are watching and waiting for you.